How to make a coal-fired steam engine boiler plant. This is part 14. Making and fitting the fire hole door. And the obvious first thing to do is to find out how big the fire hole door needs to be. So I'm using a pair of calipers to measure the fitting that I made in the last episode. And once I have the measurement, it's straight over to the large of the two lathes that I have, and I'm facing off the front of a piece of brass. And after the front of the work had been faced, it was time to start the longitudinal cut. And I'm checking this frequently with a pair of calipers because I do not want it to be undersized. This needs to be exactly the same size as the housing that it's going to sit on. I tend to follow a pattern here. I take a cut, I check it with the calipers, and I take another cut and check it with the calipers, and then maybe another cut and check it with the calipers. But before the final finishing cut, I run the tool all the way down the piece of brass to get it to nearly the right size, then I take a very fine cut to get it to the final size, and in this clip, I'm parting off the piece that I've made. And just like the song lyric, the first cut is the deepest, the last cut is the shallowest. That way you get a good finish. Right, the part is just about to fall off, I think. And when the part falls off into the chip tray, I spend some time looking for it in the chip tray because I forgot to catch it. And then once the piece has cooled sufficiently to be handled, I put it back in the chuck, being very careful to align it accurately. After which, I take a very fine facing cut all the way across the front of the part. Really, it would have been better to have changed the lathe tool for a round nose tool to take this finishing cut, but never mind. Rubbing it on a piece of emery cloth soon gets rid of the tool marks. Now, we don't have tool marks, just a lot of scratches. But these will soon be cleaned up by going down the grades of emery paper and using the polishing spindle later on. So now, I have a fire hole door and it's exactly the same size as the housing onto which it's going to be fitted. So the next job is to make the supports for the door to allow this to swing open. I found a suitable piece of brass in my scrap box, put a felt tip pen mark on it to show me how long it needed to be, and held it in position on top of the fire hole door to allow me to estimate where the hole needed to be drilled. So estimating where the hole needed to be drilled, I drilled it, and you can see it here on the right-hand side of the piece of bar that is now in the milling vise, being ripped to pieces by a milling cutter. After the first pass, I realised I didn't need to go all the way to the end. I must have fallen asleep in that bit. So I took the cut in the right place. And then slowly but surely, I milled away the part of the brass that I didn't need. Even though the brass cuts very freely, and this is a very sharp milling cutter, I did not take too deep a cut. I didn't want the part to be damaged or to jump out of the machine vise. So in no time at all, I had a finished component. Well, almost finished. I fitted a 1 8 of an inch diameter rivet into the hole in the end of the work and then using the 1 inch belt sander, ground it to shape. And then very carefully, I sawed the entire piece in half using my bandsaw. And at this point, I think it's worth mentioning that for this job, you need a sharp blade it's no good with a blunt blade, that would wander all over the place. But this blade is a new one, so it cuts quite accurately. And once again, using my one inch belt sander, I remove the rough edges left by the saw and try the parts in position. The hinges were located into the main housing using a long one eighth of an inch diameter copper rivet. This clip shows me using a pencil to make a mark on the hinges because I'm going to cut them to length because they don't obviously want to be as long as this. And then, of course, it's back to the emery cloth. I really get sick of doing this. I do a lot of it, working down the grades until I clean up the pieces of metal. When I temporarily hold the door and the hinges in position on the boiler, it looks quite good. And by the time it's all riveted together, there won't be any gaps between the hinges and the fire hole door. To be perfectly honest, I'm not happy with these parts at all. When I was grinding the end of the parts, I took a little bit too much off. So currently I am not happy with these hinges, but I'm carrying on regardless. And of course, as I mentioned in the last video, I do believe you shouldn't do this. If you make a mistake, just start again. Don't try and rectify the problem. It will only get worse. So I left the job temporarily because I get fed up after a bit and I stopped doing this. This is driving me mad. I needed to urgently go and buy some more carbide tips for the tools that I use in my small box for lathe. 
So I quickly went over to RDG Tools, which is in Halifax, or just outside Halifax in West Yorkshire. And it's a very well laid out place, this. It's much smaller than it used to be because it's more of a warehouse than it used to be. So with my visit to RDG Tools over, I was back in the workshop assembling these parts, and I'm not happy with them at all. Even the holes are in the wrong place because my drilling machine is not very accurate and the centre drill wandered all over the place. It's all down to a matter of taste and personal preferences. As far as I'm concerned, this is substandard workmanship, and I'm not happy with it. I could, of course, persuade the holes to be in the right place with a needle file, and then rivet the entire assembly together, and clean it up and make it look OK, but I would always know that it was not done properly. I'm going to make a new pair of hinges and make them properly in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.